你好，最好的骇客。Hey, what's up, you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. So, welcome to the channel. First of all, that intro that you saw was from a subscriber. Thank you very much for sending that, and I really appreciate it. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about cross-site scripting scanners because I've been getting a lot of questions about them, and I think it's really important that we clear things out. Now, I really like this one scanner called Nox.、Uh, why do I like it? First of all, because it's a proof of concept tool. So, what Nox will do is it will have to execute that cross-site scripting before it will will report it to you. Hey, this is a cross-site scripting. It's not going to say, "Hey, there's a reflected value here." That's not how these tools work. You have to feed it at least for Nox. You have to actually feed it some input where it can find a cross-site scripting、uh, attack vector and then actually execute it as well. That's super important. Now, why is this important?、Um, I'll tell you in a little bit. But this is what、uh, what I call a proof of concept scanner, and it makes sure that you have a very low false positivity rate because you have to execute that specific attack vector. That's why your confidence is pretty high. Now. I know brute logic, and believe me, guys, the coverage with this tool is amazing. The reliability is very good. Now, the thing is, the depth and the speed are not amazing because of that proof of concept that needs to be executed. The depth is not amazing because it doesn't automatically crawl every single parameter it can find on that page. No, you have to give it the right parameters because if I give it one of my challenges and I give it slash index.php, it's going to report. That I don't have a cross-site scripting vulnerability, but if I give it search.php question mark and then、uh, the q、uh, q equals and then I give it that, it's actually going to find that cross-site scripting. So as you can see on my index page, it does see that search bar, but it doesn't actually go and try to look for cross-site scripting on there. That would take way too long if your tool would have to also crawl all, the, all of those websites. It's going to take an enormous amount of time, mostly because headless browsers are being used in the background to simulate those attacks,、um, and of course, it takes a while to actually surf to a website and load it. Now, there's also pattern-based scanners, and that's here's where the distinction between a, a code review and an actual pen test becomes important. Because there's also pattern-based scanners, and as you guys know, if you are doing a pen test, you can only attack the front end. You're not going to be easily be able to read the source code of the back end unless you're really lucky. Then you can, of course, scan that back end source code. But normally, you can't see that back end source code. Now that means that your scanners can also not see back end source code. They can only see front end source code. Uh, now these scanners, these are also pretty useful, of course. But what they'll do is they'll scan the front end, see if they find any reflect values for、uh, one of the parameters that you passed on, and if they do, they'll likely report that there might be a cross-site scripting attack factor in there. But they won't actually try to execute it. So the false positivity rate is a lot higher on those types of scanners. Now, cross-site scripting. Using Nox, do you do it in a pen testing environment or do you do it while you're bug bounty hunting? I've been asked this question a million times, and guys, this is a tool like any other tool. You use it like any other tool. Like I said in the beginning, you feed it the proper data, and it will produce a cross-site scripting for you. You feed it the wrong data, and it will not. Seventy percent of the work in cross-site scripting is finding a good attack vector. Just today, I read this blog by Brute Logic about how he was able to do HTTP parameter injection using web cache poisoning to actually get a cross-site scripting to trigger with a custom HTTP header. That attack factor, finding it is already a big part of the work. If you then have it, of course, if you know how that chain works, then it's probably easy because it's really. The chance of it being filtered are going to be much more slim, of course. So that's it about 
cross-site scripting scanners. That's it, what I wanted to tell you guys about it. Now, what really sets these scanners apart, in my opinion, is what they scan for, what they have as a core engine rule set. That's what's super important, and that's where I think Nox shines. That's why I like it best. But of course, there are so many out there, and I think you need to do your own research as well. This was what I had to say about scanners. If you have anything to say about scanners, if you have any questions to ask, put it all in the comments below. And I would like to thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much, Amazing Hacker, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.